really unbelievable to see how much bureaucracy it is, how much red tape it is, what like the regulation is. It's just so not what I thought I was signing myself up for when I started my company. I'm always honest about that. Well, anytime an idea comes along that can potentially create a massive amount of wealth, uh, because we live in a country, no matter what your state is, you come from <laughs> a super red state and now live in a super blue state, but the only color they see is green and they see it at the very top. So when corporate special interests sink their teeth into anything, it is eventually going to become a non-monopolized industry, which is always the intent. So for somebody like yourself, who is a true small business owner. I love that. Don't sell. I mean, I hate to say that because, you know, I, I'm sure there's such good financial Have you seen the Simpsons episode, Tamako, from way back in the day? No, but I need to watch one? it. Okay, now you gotta watch <laughs> Everything gotta for watch him that. has a Simpsons ep- reference. Well, there is a Simpsons episode for everything and they predict the future. So I should probably be watching more Simpsons. <laughs> as far as we're concerned, oh 150 million is a slap in the face. The least we can accept is 150 billion. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, you know. I've had my, I had my first, not real acquisition offer, but my first flirt, like the first time someone came to court me. Yeah. And um, I think my NDA is expired by now, but basically the CEO of that company, which is like a large Canadian uh, publicly traded company, he was on the cover of Forbes saying like, I don't smoke weed. I'm the CEO who doesn't smoke weed. And that was like what they put on the cover of Forbes. And around the time I thought it'd be a great idea to write a blog that was like, I will always smoke weed. I smoke weed at my desk. I smoke weed when I wake up. I I am always consuming cannabis because it's my medicine. It's like super important for me to stay balanced in my mental health and to like deal with being a small business owner. And evidently like the half the company was following me on Instagram. They were, the guy was like, I'll never do a deal with her. And I was like, Oh my God. Like, I didn't even know I could ruffle someone's feathers that much with a blog post, but okay. But yeah, it's like really interesting. Like I always tell people, I'm like the number one thing you should start asking also about like what company you're supporting in cannabis is like, do they even smoke weed? Because a lot of them don't. And they're proud that they don't even know the plant. And it's super bizarre to me. Yeah. Well, it, there's a lot of industries that are like that. And the best examples are Wall Street. You, you have these corporate raiders that invest in these companies. They don't even know what they do. The only thing that matters to them is, is this going to provide a return on investment? And how big of a margin is it going to give me? California is a great example of that. And there's so many industries that are in California and the people that are involved. It's very, that's the thing. That's why I love ragging on California because everyone likes to say, oh, it's so, it's so Democrat. I'm like, it's corporate. It's corporate. I live in Orange County and I live in Dana Point, California. My business is in Orange County and yeah. this is the most red state there is. And they have right more now. control over our businesses. They tax us harder. I mean, in this city, I can't breathe without the city of Anaheim knowing it. You know, and it was a big thing for me. I used to run my business in an area in LA that I would say is more like kind of a free for all because it's such a big city. It's really hard to control what people are doing. That's just the truth about running a business in LA. Like my landlord knew what I was doing, but the city of LA didn't. And then we got like sort of news that Orange County was going to actually provide licensing first. And so we moved the business and moved the hemp business to Anaheim because the tax rate was better. And then I very quickly realized like Disneyland is here. (laughs) So this city is, they're watching everything you do. They're charging you for everything, you know, and it's just like, if my alarm goes off on accident, I get a bill from the city because the police had to come. I think that also, I'm taxed to death. It's crazy. Like, but I always tell people, I'm like, California is as red as they get. People just don't know it. (laughs) <laughs> right. Well, it is in terms of controlling business. It really is like that. Like, it, you know, I think our whole concept of red and blue is kind of warped because I totally understand what you're saying. I have a very good friend whose husband um, for a long time was the head of housing and urban development for L.A. County and had to deal with the politics in L.A. And he is somebody that would probably identify as an independent, probably does tend to be more conservative. But overall, his whole goal was trying to help people get housing. Like this is why he was doing what he was doing. And the obstacles put in place by the people that are supposedly the Democrats were off the charts. They made everything more difficult to do 
um, for, and this is for a state operation. So I can't imagine that it would be any different for a business. Like it's not, they're not progressive about helping people have businesses, especially small businesses. No, I honestly like wonder like every day if I should leave and I'm constantly like, am I crazy to run my business here? And people constantly tell me in meetings like, oh, you'll be three times more successful if you move your business to Florida, move your business to Nevada. Um, it's hurting you being in California. You know, I hear it all the time. Um, and it's just like, it's just one of those things that I haven't quite, um, done the the big leap yet but it really is hard like I don't want to play a violin because I choose to do this but okay. it's actually hardest to be the employer because I see my employees and I have employees in other states and when I run the payroll because I do stuff like that myself I see what what's happening to them and I think like that's the biggest bummer is that at the end of the day like almost half their check it just into thin air. Yeah. Um, and it's just a bummer because there are a lot of them are young kids, you know, and if they're just trying to like change their life and it's, um, especially with the way they regulated cannabis right now, you know, the biggest thing that's hurting the legal cannabis industry, because I think it's really important that people know legal cannabis in California is failing. And it is yeah. failing because of the way they've regulated it and the way they're taxing it. And the industry doesn't have a chance. And this year is going to be a bloodbath unlike anything I've ever seen. I've seen mentors, people that like I, I saw have a moment in cannabis and that made me feel like I could do it, especially a lot of women. They're gone from the industry. Their businesses have been taken from them. And it's unbelievably challenging to survive. And like the fact that the state believes that people are going to go spend an extra 40% to get high and choose that over their weed man, who they've probably been buying from for years or a local dispensary, oh, yeah. or you have a you have all these cities that they had the opportunity to have legal cannabis and they said, no, we don't want it. And so there's only certain cities that said, okay, come one, come all. So you have 10 legal stores on one strip where they're 10 illegal store or non licensed stores. I don't like to say illegal because like whatever, um, not paying non tax stores down the street and nothing's happening. And it's just, it's what's going to happen in New York. Um, it's what's happening in New York. You walk down the street in New York, you don't know what's legal and what isn't legal. But when you get to the counter and you pay, you're going to know as a consumer, and am I supposed to believe in this economy that people are going to choose to give the government an extra 40%? Because it's not going to the operators. It's not going to the farmers. The Emerald Triangle has no. been decimated, um, you know, and we have history here. Like there, there are people like I'm in their store, I, these guys, and we were just talking at one of these cannabis events. They're like, you know, my family has been doing this for three, four generations. And it's just unbelievably sad and tragic. And every single day, I'm literally like, in all of this, none of us considered what if people hate the government so much they don't want to give them a piece? Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.